hey, you're getting ready to pull the floor pan or the trunk pan out of your car and you want to see how to separate the frame from the body, how to brace everything up, support it off the ground so you can get that job done, stay tuned to this episode of Soren Christina. We'll show you how. Thanks for tuning in. So today's dilemma is going to pick up from last week, which last weekend I was cutting out the floorboard and the trunk and I got it roughed, roughly cut, but I haven't done, uh, there's a lot of detail that I need to cut out around the perimeter to prepare to install the floor pan and the trunk pan. But I've got a, a major dilemma right now on um, handling this car and I've had a lot of comments about what people have, have chimed in and said what I should do. Um, and a lot of this stuff I'm already aware of is just a matter of getting these gears turning and getting them going in the right direction. But let me at least set the stage for you and let you know what the issues are. So first off, the body is held off the frame or it's held, it's attached to the frame by the beams that go to the floor. So that you can't remove the floor until you remove the body from the frame. But what I need to do is I'm going to end up with the body off of the car and I'm going to cut out the floor structure and the trunk structure. That's going to really leave a lot of the body itself unsupported. So what I need to do is I need to first, one, I need to figure out how am I going to lift this? And it's not so much how do I hook a hoist up and, and, and lift it up. I'm going, to, I'm going to do that off of the ceiling. I've done that plenty of times. I've lifted motors and put motors in and out of cars with, with my... Uh, my roof framing, my ceiling framing. But what I'm talking about is what pick points do I use on the car to not cause more damage? And that's been the dilemma is where do I grab it? In the front, it's pretty easy. I've got it figured out. But in the back, I'm not quite so sure um, exactly how I'm going to go about it, but I'm figuring it out right now. So give you a look. On the front, I figured... There's plenty of structure at this firewall, so what I did is I made a couple of brackets that I bolted in place, two bolts that go into where the hood hinge, uh, hood hinges mount, so that's on, on the both sides. And I've got a little hook that I'm going to be able to get a strap, and I'll be able to have a little triangulated strap with uh, something up here, and I'll be able to hoist and pick this end up. Okay, no problem. Then when I set this down, fortunately, I've got... A mounting point here and a mounting point here that those are not in the way of the floor pan so I can go ahead and put a skid of some sort underneath there and I've got some two by fours I'm gonna make something uh, but in the back this is where the dilemma has been like what the hell am I gonna do back here where do you pick it up so I, I'm not excited about picking it up from the C pillars um, everything's on an angle back here you've got the you've got an opening in the glass and so how, how do you you know where do you put this Fortunately, fortunately, these Tri-5s have both an inner and an outer fender quarter panel at the back. The wheel weld is tied into both the outside and the inside. So the wheel weld, that's a really stiff little area right there. This is really stiff on this side. In fact, it's so stiff, they decided that that's where they were going to mount the shock, the shock towers. So the shocks mount to there, even though the frame is bolted in front of that. The frame is bolted over here. Now, that's where the frame mount there. This bulkhead will stay. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to figure out a way to frame something right here that I can pick up at the rear bulkhead. Get the car up in the air. And once I get it, get it up in the air, then I'll be able to disconnect the frame. I'll be able to pull the frame out. The frame will roll out. And then I'll be able to set it back down and do my work. And I need to work on it where I can get to every piece of the floor. So that's the trick is to figure this out. So I bought a lot of square tubing to, to brace it up. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to X brace it in a number of different places. I'm going to put some, um, some beams here and there just to stiffen it. And it's probably going to be way more than what this needs to be, but that's, that's, uh, that's how we're going to do it. So I will let you in on the secret as soon, as soon as I figure it out. <laughs> So when you take on a project like this, you need a source of materials. And raw materials, one of the things that's an oddity 
is, is the steel, miscellaneous steel. So, you know, you can go to the big box stores and they're going to have little three foot pieces or maybe your local hardware store might have some small pieces of, of things that you need. But like I wanted specific things. I wanted specifically, I wanted 18 gauge sheet metal. And uh, I had a need for some small tubing, like right now we're gonna brace this car up and so I needed to get some small pieces that I didn't have. Uh, at least I didn't have enough. So there's a store locally that just opened up not too long ago called Metal Supermarkets. And it's a franchise that's owned by a fellow by the name of David. And his two guys there are Jeff and Matt. And they've been helping me out now. I bought three, three pieces so far for this car, three foot by four foot. And they basically take a 10 foot sheet of, of 18 gauge metal and just shear it sell you what you want. If you wanted six inches, they would shear six inches off. So I got a couple of sticks of one by one by 11 gauge, which is basically eighth inch uh, square tubing. Um, I had them cut two 24 foot joints into eight six foot pieces. So now I've got this in my, in my stores. I'll figure out some sort of way to put it in here. But the other cool thing is they've got miscellaneous pieces that are, that are uh, drops and they're not free. You gotta buy them, but I mean, it's, it's really cool when you can go out there and I don't know, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to use this stuff for, but I bought it. <laughs> I got, I got uh, some plate material. This is eighth inch plate material. I know sooner or later I'll end up needing this. If it's not for Christine, it'll be for something else. And uh, a little bit of 3 16th inch plate material. So, I mean, these drops, it's pretty cool. They'll cut any length that you want, any length that you need. Um, sell it to your load you up, and you're good to go. So if you don't know where to, where to go to buy this kind of stuff, sheet metal, miscellaneous small pieces of steel, metal supermarkets. Maybe look for one near you. It's worth a shot. All right, I figured out what I was gonna do and I did it. So remember now, this is only to pick it up. So don't judge me. This is temporary. It's only what I need to get the car up off the ground. Maybe you'll think this is ingenious. Maybe you think I'm an idiot. <laughs> it doesn't matter. This is gonna work. So check it out. All right. What I've done is I made a trapeze. I made a couple of A-frames. I went through. I went through underneath the, the package tray, underneath the trunk. I'm basically, I threaded the needle. I went underneath, and that's where the trunk bracket attaches to here. It attaches here. In the front, it's attached there. I mean, that's the strongest point at the rear of this car. Back here, same thing. So I've got a horizontal bar going across, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go off of my roof. My, my, uh, I keep calling it my roof because you guys have to understand. I built this garage long ago, and I built all of these trusses. So to me, the roof, ceiling, same thing because it's all they're all trussed. So I've got a strong point in the center that I can always pick up stuff, and I've always been able to pick up motors from here. I picked up car bodies. I did the cutlass. I'm about to pick up Christine. So. That's what I've done is I've got this trapeze, this, this bar that's going to go across. I'll uh, put, a, put a hoist up here, and I'm going to pick it up from back here, and that'll lift it up. That'll allow me to get the frame out from underneath. So now what's left is I've still got to figure out how I'm going to brace it. So I think I want to put a cross brace in here um, just to say that I did. I don't know. I've got the material. Why not if it's not in the way? Do something at the door frame over there. Do something at the door frame over here. And I think I might need to have one horizontal here. So an X here, a horizontal there, something in the door, something in the door, and go with that. So let me see what I come up with. Well, we got it done. It didn't, I was out thinking myself. And once I got, once I got into it and I started putting in the pieces together, once I put that trapeze in the back, then everything else started clicking. And I, look, I used a lot of, all that, as much of that material as I could and let me show you what I got going on so I kept all those six foot pieces just exactly where they were because they were pretty close so it goes from the top corner over here to the bottom to the um, lower corner of the door same thing here cross cross six foot six foot six foot across there's no sense in taking time to cut all this and make all this fabricated and nice and pretty because this is temporary this is just gonna hold a car square hold these openings and alignments for me while I while this floor is out so you know this is there's a lot of lot of braces in here i was concerned that even though i'm going to pick it up from the firewall and the firewall strong what i'm concerned about is this dog leg and with that dog leg there's a good chance that when this is picked up if this if this entire car wants to pinch and it's trying to pinch through the roof 
it's got to go through this dog leg and that kink's going to be weak. So I put a strut from top to bottom, but that was it. Once I got all of this in, then I went in and I unbolted all the frame. All the framing, the frame is completely disconnected except for two bolts at bat, that's back at the trunk. But right now, uh, these are all the bolts. There's 12 here, and um, I may not have all 12 in this line, but I took out 12. Yeah, there's a bunch. And I used my 3 8 inch impact. This was a lifesaver. I ended up shearing some of the bolts. Some of them broke. Some of them came free. Some of them had nuts. Some of the nuts are in the floor. <laughs> it's, it's just all over the place. There's two different lengths. There's the long ones in the front and then shorter ones everywhere else. And then the ones that are back by the real, rear sail panel at the trunk, I could not get them out. So as you can see through the garage door windows, it got dark on me. So unfortunately I can't finish this tonight, but that's all right. I'm actually feeling pretty good. I'm not too tired. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go inside, go get cleaned up. Tomorrow morning, fresh as a daisy, I'll come back at it. We'll lift this thing up. I'll make my sawhorses. We'll pick it up, roll the frame out, make the sawhorses, bolt it down, set it back down on the ground, and be ready. To, we're going to be ready to start cleaning up that floor. So that'll be tomorrow. We'll see you in a moment. Cheers. Hey, good morning. It is a beautiful day outside. Gorgeous temperatures. It warmed up a little bit, so it's a nice, comfortable day. It's uh, <laughs> it's it's definitely saying, don't work in a garage. Go play. Go do something fun. But we're gonna we're gonna kid ourselves and say that this is fun today. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this car up off the frame, roll the frame out. I'm gonna build the two the two supports that it's gonna sit on, and uh, we'll be on our way. So this shouldn't take too long. I'm hopeful. So uh, great day to be working in a garage. But let's see if we can't keep it short. So let me show you what I got going on. All right, you can see I made my trapeze yesterday over the, the rear C pillar package tray area. So that's all locked in. I've got a lifting strap over, um, hooked between the crossbars and I've got it up to a come along that's up to a couple of two by 12s up in the ceiling, up in the front. <clears throat> I just invested in a Harbor Freight electric winch so it's portable i've got it to where it's just on a t on a inch and a half by inch and a half square tube that i can just pick up and move wherever i want so right now i've just got it set up there just temporarily just sitting up it's got a couple of cords and a remote control to control it so i've only got another foot but before the uh any two block mechanism here uh kicks in and i've only got about a foot of cable back here before i get two blocked up here so it's um I don't have a whole lot of room to get the car off the ground. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is I think once I get it hoisted up, I'm going to take the wheels off, at least the wheels off the front. And I'll lower the front onto a couple of cargo um, casters and then roll it out. That's what we're going to do. So here we go. All right. So we're ready to do this. Um, at the back, I've got the two bolts that are still on the rear frame. I went to cut them out. Or I tried to remove them with the socket and it wouldn't come out. They were, they were stuck. I couldn't get to them. But wait till you see this. When the body comes off, damn thing's not even attached. I mean, it's just, it's just ridiculous. There's so much corrosion back there, it's crazy. So, try to get the front up first. about up to that two block mechanism there yeah see i just ran out of ran out of um out of range so i'm i don't know i'm up i'm up maybe 10 inches off the frame here so then i'll be able to pull these two tires off lower the frame i've got to get this down hopefully hopefully i'll clear the steering box i'm hoping not to pull it off i don't to the drag length it's just a pain in the foot <clears throat> So I'm watching really closely back here, nothing seems to be pinching. Let's see. 
at it you know when I mean, you think the car is heavy the body's not that heavy I've often heard people say boy they don't sure don't build them like they used to no thank <laughs> thank God I mean these things are they're, they're tin they're, there's nothing to these cars these old I, I love them look I love them but the there's very little weight in this um, that this body is super is super light most of the weight is in the steel of the frame so I've got it up in the air it doesn't look like it's moved at all so one success, and I'm gonna go ahead and pull these tires off, and then uh, we'll see if I can't wheel this frame out from underneath. Got it. There it is, just dangling in the air. So it's being hung by the two uh, mounts where the hood hinges go. That's where it's hanging up now. Um, it's pretty stable. It's pretty stable. Let's see. See the back of the car. It's up there. I mean, it's it's doing well. It's doing really well. So now let's see if we can't get the light to adjust. You can see what this frame looks like. I don't know, it's the first time this light frame has seen the light of day since 1956. How do you like that? That's where all the weight is. So, look, you know, if you're just going to do this without the weight of the body, that's the old cheapo uh, furniture dollies from, from Harbor Freight. What, $12 a piece? <clears throat> so, there we go. Oh, shop dog. Hey, Josie. Hey, Deuce. Deuce is a bad dog. Deuce is doing his... His lizard impression, impression. His dead lizard. But there it is. All right, let's get working on those frames. Told you guys this is a do-it-yourself project. One hand does it all. That's me. So I'm getting ready to do some rough carpentry. So I'm getting ready to make the uh, the saw block or the saw horse um, for supporting this. It's going to be about 44 inches wide by uh, 28 or so inches tall. I've got my chops all set up. I've got some two by fours, some one by fours ready to go. So let's get after it. to be you know so it's strong in two directions perch is going to sit right here and right here that's where the firewall is going to set so let me get it to the car all right 
So I got it in place. It's 39 inches in between the two bolt holes on the front firewall. I drilled a 5 16 inch pilot. I got 3 8 inch lags. Got my 9 16 inch impact. And uh, we're ready to attach this. So you know, I did this with the cutlass. And it was similar. But with the cutlass, I think I got away with a lot of scrap wood. I happen to have a lot of scrap at the time. Right now, I don't have a squat of scrap wood that, that was enough to do this. I had to go buy it. So I got caught up in all that. Uh, <laughs> how much does lumber cost now? I got all in that fiasco. Get that one started. Get this one started. Hopefully I got my, my hole lined up. Oh yeah, it looks good. It looks really good. Yeah, we're cooking now. Okay, I'm gonna be able to tight, tighten these up. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. That's tight. And that's tight. About to put her on skis now. Here we go. So, just drop the winch a little bit. And there you go. How do you like that? Done. I did check this for level. So, I'm leveling a front. I need to make sure I'm leveling a back. And so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust my shoes in the back to make sure that those two, those two are sitting, making the car square and doesn't set a rack into it. It shouldn't because it's already braced up, but you never know there may be something in it. And I might be right now, this is my opportunity to take out a rack that might already be in it. So let's make the church level. There's the two rear frames. So now, the supports I should say. Put this little block here because my method is gonna be, I'm gonna put this underneath the wheel well and it's going to, it's going to attach right above where that beam is now. I'm gonna attach it right in that area and that's again, one of the strongest parts of this car. So I'm gonna have it there and there and then we're gonna put a couple of cross braces underneath and then lower it and be done. So let me show you how this is going to sit. So now it's tucked up underneath here. And this is why I blocked it. I blocked it out because I know I might have to do some, I know I'm going to get into this and weld right against this. And I might have to do some patching on that. So I wanted this block to be above the seam where the trunk um, floor comes in. And I wanted this to be off so I could get that flange. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on the inside. I'm going to drill some holes on the other side and then come through with lags and dog into this. So here we are at the back and it's level. So I'm level at the front, I'm level at the back. I need to make sure my two skis are the same height off the floor. That one I had shimmed up by a two by four and a one by four. And they're up a little bit. This one I'm gonna do the same thing. So it's up a little bit and that way when I let the car down, it'll, it'll, um, everything will be level. In. Just need to lower it. Let's see. There it is, I felt the weight. Woo, there it 
is. All right. Done. Done, done, done. That's it. <laughs> I like it. It's good. It's uh, sturdy, it's stable. You know, it's, uh, it's not going anywhere. Everything's level and square. So, man, put that down. Appreciate you watching. Hope you got something out of this one. We're rolling now, so we're gonna get the floor prepped next time. Um, gonna have to cut all the, all the edges out, get it all that cleaned up, and get the floor pan ready to come in, the trunk pan ready to come in. I'm gonna have to repair some rust around that periphery. Um, so the next video ought to be pretty good too, but I hope you like this one. And man, I tell you what, I do appreciate everybody that tunes in. I thank you for all the well wishes and comments. Do appreciate the thumbs up. If you like the videos, please give us a thumbs up. And if you are enjoying the channel, please do subscribe, you know, so we're going to get better. This is going to definitely get better. It's got a, a ways to go on this. You know, we're only in the metal work. Wait till we get into the wiring and the upholstery and the motor and the transmission and the running gear and the paint and the trim. I mean, it's got a ways to go, so stick with us. We'll get there. Cheers.